Hi, it's Greg Miles, a.k.a. the Stafford Wolf, here for you. Um, I know it's been a while, but here's another magic deck I've made. Um, I call it, I AM Muad'Dib! Um, ten points to the guy who can guess where that reference is from, though everybody knows, so there you go. Um, so, the point of this deck is to put a whole bunch of worms on the field, a whole bunch of cool worms on the field, and, well, that that's the point. The way you do this, first off, is through trying to get a bunch of mana out there. Um, and so, the first portion of the game is just going to be you throwing out a bunch of cards that will help you get mana. Um, the ones that I've chosen are Coalition Relic, Mindstone, and Prismatic Lens. In retrospect, I think I probably should have gone with the Birds of Paradise rather than the Prismatic Lens. Um... But I sort of kind of have a sweet spot for Prismatic Lens. Mainly because because it's an artifact that can sort of kind of put it in any deck I want. <laughs> so it's sort of kind of one of my go-to cards for stuff like that. I also have Reap and Sow, which I really like because it, it allows you to get pretty much any land instead of just the basic land, which meant that I could put in, you know, not just your basic lands, but a lot of other lands that I have in there, which I thought was really cool. And another way I do this is, as you can guess, is by the types of lands I have in there. I have some Cloud Post, um, some of the Ravanica, um, Bounce lands in there. Um, so, there you go, that's what it's on the mana. Um, as far as the worms go, there are lots of different things I have in here. I have, I don't really have that many actual worms in here because mainly the, the deck works through Crush of Worms. Um, but the the big worms that I do have are Auto Chitin Worm, Latest Flag Worm, Massacre Worm, and Channel Holder Worm. Um, and I always thought that these worms were sort of kind of cool. Auto Chitin Worm, I really like. Mainly because he's one of the unspoken fatties in Magic. Like, everybody talks about Darksteel Colossus, which I love. I love Darksteel Colossus. But this card is also pretty fat, pretty high up there, and I, I just wish you would see more play. Um, Plated Slagworm was the first worm I really liked. I had other worms before Plated Slagworm, but he was the first card where I, I got it in a pack and was like, whoa, you know, the first worm that I really, really liked. Um, I, I just sort of kind of thought he was cool. Largely because he, he, for a while he was the biggest creature I had. Like, up until I got played as Flagworm, I think the largest creature I had was Thorn Elemental. And then I got played as Flagworm and I was like, whoa! I mean, then Massacre Worm, which is new, and I just sort of kind of really like Massacre Worm. I think it's cool. Um,. So, there you go. Um, just on defense, there's not a lot on defense in this deck. Um, the, the best I really have for you is Bright Flame. Largely, 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 largely because I think I have enough mana in this deck to make Bright Flame work. And it was, at one point in time, one of my favorite cards because it got me ridiculous life. Um, and that's pretty much it on defense. Um, oh yeah, and for drawing, you have Harmonize, which is sort of kind of, you know, vanilla. I mean, as far as green draw goes, Harmonize is pretty much the first thing that comes to, at least in my mind. It's the green concentrate, what are you going to do? Um, and then of course I have Soul of Majesty, which is actually pretty new. Well, not new new, but it was in the Alara block. And with a deck like this where you have so many fatties, it can, go, it can get you so many cards. But the problem with it is if you have nothing on the field, which you might not when you need it, because these fatties are kind of hard to get out, eh, it's going to just sort of kind of stick in your hand. But, I mean, the way this deck is set up, this card could easily draw you like six or even on occasion eight cards. So... Um, let, let, let's see. What else? Um, for the sideboard, I have 
go for the throw, which makes up for my defense problem if you get into a jam. Um, apart from that, a lot of the sideboard was me trying to put some cards I thought would go really well into this deck, but I just sort of kind of ran out, which isn't really the purpose of a sideboard, but hey, whatever. So, um, first off, I have a Chroma's Memorial and Loxodon Warhammer, which can really make these worms better. What the heck was that? Anyway, um, those can sort of kind of make these worms better. A Chroma's Memorial, um, pretty much makes all of these cards mini Acromas. I wouldn't even say mini Acromas. The only difference between, you know, these cards with the Chroma's Memorial is the whole protection thing, which is big, I guess, but, I mean, you're still talking about a flying 6-6 six, six worm with haze coming right at you. Ha, ha, ha! And, of course, for, you know, not having seven looks it on Warhammer. <laughs> which is cheaper, kind of. Not really, because you still have to pay the equip cost. So, you Maybe one mana cheaper, but a Colonel's Memorial. There you go. Um, and then, just in the event that somebody has a crap ton of removal, or somebody's making you discard these, I have, you know, some things that bring worms back from the graveyard. Or, well, Roar of Worms, weird. It doesn't really bring a worm back from the graveyard. It just... Part of me really thinks I should have just put Roar of Worm into this deck, because Roar of Worm is, in some ways, better than Crush of Worms. Because if you get it into your graveyard, you can get a 6-6 six, six Worm for 4 mana, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's only 1 Worm to 3. I'm a Timmy, okay? I want 6 Worms! Instead of just 2. 6 Worms, you hear me? Um, which, by the way, I guess I should describe what Crush of Worm does, and I'll do that in a sec. Um, so you have Beacon of Unrest, Eternal Witness, and Roar of the Worm, which sort of kind of help you get, you know, going with somebody who's trying to be smart and make you discard or, or decide that they want to destroy your worms before they can hit you, hit them. Ha! No, not going to happen, all right? Because I got super mega ultra worms coming from the graveyard. Oh yeah. Um let's see. You have anyway, so let me explain Crush of Worms real quick. Crush of Worms is one of my favorite cards from back in the day. The point of Crush of Worms is basically that it allows you to put out three six six worm tokens. But but here's the kicker, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, here's that kicker. Not only will this card get you three six six worm tokens, no, it will also let you play it from the graveyard so that you can get not only three 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 worm tokens, but another three six six worm tokens. Did I say three three worm tokens? No. It's six six baby. Large and in charge. So there you go. You get six 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 worm tokens. Right there. Ah, uh, crush your worms. <laughs> and and not only that, ladies and gentlemen, but this deck right here, this deck right here has how many copies of that thing in there? Four copies. Four copies, ladies and gentlemen. Which means just on Crush of Worms alone, you can have twenty-four. Count them, twenty-four, six, six, one tokens, ladies and gentlemen. Of, of course, you would have to have the mana to pay for that, but, uh, hey, nothing's free. So, there you go. That's my, uh, deck. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. See ya.